13. Well, the passengers of a taxi have refused to help a female cyclist after a nasty dooring incident in the heart of the city. The crash was captured on her helmet camera and has prompted calls for tougher penalties. Alexis Daish has this report. Cycling up Collins Street in a designated lane becomes the trip which could have killed her. It was 7 p.m. yesterday. Three businessmen opened the door in crawling traffic. They get out of the taxi without helping the female rider, instead blaming her. The inside, I guess you... That's See what, what this is? That. That's dangerous. She asks for their details. The taxi drives away, the trio walk off, and she follows. You ride up the inside of a car that stopped at the light, you are a fool. They continue trying to ignore the cyclist, but not before a parting shot. The way people like you ride around is disgusting. They were fully responsible for what happened. They could have caused a serious injury, and yet they couldn't have cared less. It's commonly known as dooring. Police can charge offenders with causing hazard to person or vehicle by opening door or alighting from vehicle. The penalty, a $361 fine. Police can't confirm whether or not they're investigating the incident. But Nine News understands they did contact Bicycle Network Victoria late this afternoon, asking if they knew the identity of the passengers in the taxi. This accident adds to many along the notorious Collins Street bike lane, prompting calls for harsher penalties. Well, I wanted to see demerit points attached to people's licence for this offence as well. The Taxi Services Commission is urging witnesses to come forward. Alexis Daish, Nine News. This is Nine News with Peter Hitchner. Good evening. The female cyclist doored by a businessman stepping out of a Collins Street cab has broken her silence. She doesn't blame the taxi passenger but says the CBD bicycle network needs an overhaul. She spoke to Alexis Daish. After riding head-on into a taxi door, the female cyclist says she's not out to antagonise anyone. I don't want to get in anyone's way. Um, but I'm trying to do it as safely as I can. Wanting only to be known as CD, the 28-year-old escaped the Collins Street ordeal with just bruises. I take the risk and I know when I'm riding down there I must go slowly, which I was at the time. CD says she doesn't blame the taxi passengers. One, a 65-year-old Brighton man, has handed himself in to police. The 30-centimetre bike lane is a refuge, not a designated bike path, which CD says the city urgently needs. When I first started riding, I was terrified of that lane, but it is the only practical and efficient way for me to get from work to home. And police support her. A cyclist is quite entitled to be there on the left. The reality is, though, should you do that, is that safe? 30% of all Melbourne car dooring crashes occur on four streets. Elizabeth Street, Collins Street, St Kilda Road and Chapel Street, South Yarra. Melbourne City Council is spending $5.6 million on bike lane upgrades, but Collins Street won't benefit. Collins Street and Flinders Street are so busy and with so little room, you can't fit. Next month, trials will begin on newly designed bike lanes here in Glenferry Road, Hawthorne. They separate cyclists from parked cars with a 90 centimetre buffer zone and if successful they may be implemented in other locations. Vic Roads is also conducting a review of cyclist road rules. Regardless, CD is getting back on the bike. And the bike was only minorly damaged and um, I'm fine. Well Alexis is in Collins Street tonight. Lexi, anyone been charged? Good evening, Pete. Not as yet. The female cyclist has, though, given a statement to police and, interestingly, so too has the driver of the taxi involved. Transit police are now investigating the incident, but as I said, they haven't charged the 65-year-old Brighton man who handed himself in. Vic Roads are now conducting a review of all road rules for cyclists, as well as the lanes they use, like the one here in Collins Street, and it's expected that will be handed down by the end of this year. Pete. Thanks. A Brighton businessman caught on camera knocking a cyclist off her bike with a taxi door has apologised and handed himself in to police. The accident has sparked furious debate over the behaviour of road users in the inner city. It's the incident that has all of Melbourne talking. The man in the middle of Monday night's so-called dooring has turned himself into police and today was backpedalling from the dismissive tone he took with the woman he knocked over. 
Look, I reacted very badly afterwards. She got my back up. The thing I did wrong was how I reacted afterwards. And for that, I sincerely apologise. Millionaire toy importer Jeff Hunter says until yesterday he had no idea what he did was an offence. I think it's just an accident that can happen to anyone that gets out of a taxi. Um, especially in that part of the city where you have this much between the gutter and the road. I opened a cab door. She was coming at about 10 kilometres an hour on the inside of me. They need to look out for cyclists. Cyclists are another form of transport. The camera carrying cyclist told Seven News today, I just wanted the men identified so the police could handle them and explain the law to them. I am happy the man has been identified. She's unlikely to press charges, which means Mr Hunter may face no further action. Done she definitely came on very aggressive. Probably I don't blame her, she's fallen off her bike. Um, but there was no need for the sort of the aggression that she showed. Jeff Hunter's experience is a lesson to all motorists and passengers. Cyclists are well within their rights to ride between the curb and the traffic, whether that traffic is moving or stopped. If you're looking at a cyclist that's riding on the left-hand side of, of a motor vehicle, they're quite entitled to be there. Well, we've recently uh, in increased the penalties for car dooring, so the penalty for that offence is now $361 on the spot or $1,400 if it goes to court. You'll be looking out from now on. I certainly will. Glenn Conley, 7 News. A taxi passenger who opened a cab door on a city cyclist has come forward. He has apologised to the rider but says he didn't know he'd done anything wrong. Michael Bennett has the latest. A split-second decision that sparked a heated debate. The passenger who opened the door today came forward to apologise. She was quite aggressive. I probably got my back up and behaved poorly. And for that, I certainly apologise. The rider's camera microphone recorded Jeff Hunter's initial reaction. I've never heard of the word dooring before in my life. I had no idea it was an offence. Despite posting the confrontation on YouTube, a friend of the cyclist says she wanted to remain anonymous. She's a little bit bruised, a little bit battered, but she got back on the bike again yesterday and is back on the bike again today. Police say the cyclist was entitled to ride on the left of the taxi and confirmed they are investigating. Even though there's no designated bike lane on Collins Street where the Doring incident occurred, authorities say people getting out of cars can still be subjected to a Doring charge if they hit a cyclist. We're doing some trials now at Glen Ferry Road to introduce some lane design to try and make it easier for cyclists to stay out of the Doring zone. But it could take time. There is no silver bullet. It is just about changing behaviours. Accidents happen and I'm, I'm very sorry the accident happened. The penalty for Doring is a $361 fine. Michael Bennett joins us from Collins Street. Michael, incidents like this are all too common these days. Stephen, it certainly is, and the arguments around bike safety have flared since this since this vision surfaced. Now, we're close by to where the latest Doring incident occurred. After being here for only a few minutes, it really is easy to see how an accident like this can happen. Now, the female cyclist wasn't travelling in a bike lane, but she was travelling on along a section of the road that cyclists do and are expected to be in when they're travelling down Collins Street. Now, it's no more than about 50 centimetres between car and curb. And that may explain why about 30% of Doring accidents happen in the CBD, most of them at locations like this. Now, the traffic is phenomenal. There's cars, bikes, pedestrians, trams, all using the same route, people making split-second decisions that are impacting on one another. So unless some sort of major road restructuring takes place, the only solution to this problem is for people to have patience and look out for one another. Michael Bennett in the city.